Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. Dot com. In this video, we'll demonstrate DML error logging introduced in Oracle 10.2. In some situations, the most obvious solution to a problem is a multi row DML statement. When DML fails, all data changes are rolled back. So, a problem with a single row could cause all the work for a large operation to be rolled back. For this reason, people sometimes avoid more efficient multi row DML operations to make error handling easier. DML error logging was introduced in Oracle 10.2 to allow DML to continue past exceptions. We create a source table. Notice the code column is optional, it can contain null values. We populate the source table with 100,000 rows of dummy data. We update row 1000 and 10,000, setting the code column to null. We gather statistics. This isn't really necessary for the example. We create a destination table with a similar structure to the source table. Notice the code column is mandatory. Null values are not allowed. If we tried to copy the source data into the destination table, it would fail because of the two rows with null code values. We use the DBMS error log package to create an error log for the destination table. If we don't give the log table a name, it will default to the table name prefixed with ERR$ underscore. We can also use a specific name and even set the table space for the log table. We use the user tables view to display the tables in the schema. In addition to the source and destination tables, we see the two error log tables we created. We describe one of the error log tables. It contains maximum length and data type independent versions of all the available columns from the base table. There are also columns to hold error information. We try to copy the data from the source table to the destination table using an insert select. We are not using DML error logging, so we get an error. We attempted to create a row with a null value in the code column of the destination table. As a result, the DML statement failed and all the changes were rolled back. We have no rows in our destination table. This time we use DML error logging. The start of the statement is the same as what we used before, but we add the DML error logging clause. We tell it which log table to use with log errors into and the table name. We add a tag, which is just free text. I've used the word insert, but you could use something more descriptive and maybe include a timestamp. We also include a reject limit, in this case unlimited. We can see all but two of the source rows were transferred to the destination table. So DML error logging allowed us to continue processing past the errors. We query the error log table and we see the errors for the two rows that failed to be transferred. We have access to the column values, so our code could attempt to reprocess the rows if we wanted. We can use the same approach for updates, deletes and merges. There are examples of those in the linked article. Thanks for watching. As always there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.